So speaking about uh, being around people and relationships in the industry, I'd love to hear, this is super just curious, uh, how it works with both you and your wife being both in the industry. Um, as both cre- as, as the creatives, I'm curious if that, you know, do you talk creativity in the household or do you not? Like, for example, my wife is a, a, a labor and delivery nurse. So we ha- we use very different uh, parts of our brains. I'm the creative. She's very, you know, scientific, essentially, you know, so it's very different. Yeah. And our work is very, very different. I'm curious how it is as, you know, married to us, to, to somebody in the, in the industry. Um, if you, you I just love to hear your perspective. Yeah, I think we've been very lucky in that regard because this is a tough, a tough industry, especially when you're first starting out, uh, the, the little pay or the no pay, <laughs> the long hours. And like somebody who maybe has like a more traditional job wouldn't understand why you're doing what you're doing. And it, it was just very important for us to always have each other's back because we just understood what the other one was going through. Um, and then from like a more like, technical standpoint it, it's been great seeing her develop her career as a master engineer and see her incredible progression in these eight years and she's had the same with me as a mixing engineer and it's just funny because like our jobs are like pretty much like interrelated so we've had like a little insight into another world like a lot of mixing engineers maybe don't really mm. understand exactly what goes on yeah. behind the curtains in mastering. And I've had, I've been able to pick that at the arguably the best mastering studio in the world. Cause like sure. I said, like Sterling has literally the best engineers, but they're like, they're like old friends. We, we just hang, you know, we just, they come to our house and we're, we're just friends. So I've had the luxury of having that. And then she as a mastering engineer, also has the inside of like the mixing perspective and what a mixer is expecting when we get a mastering and like she's asking me like countless questions like about like why would a mixer do this or like why would like you know whatever it is and i and same same with me like why why does it happen in mastering or like how is this gonna affect what i'm doing so it's just been very enriching for our careers to have like each each other's in in our corners you know? Yeah, that's a great perspective. Absolutely, you get a whole another look at things that people might not uh, get to see. That's really cool, for sure. At, you know, two yeah. huge. Are you still with Electric Lady, or are you? Uh... No, so so. Let, I'll go back to the story. So I I was at Electric Lady. I was working for Electric Lady for the studio for like about a year and a half. Um, I first they hired me like as a what they call a general assistant. And then eventually I became an assistant engineer. Now, now at the time, uh, Michael Brower, who for those who don't know, is like a very famous mixing engineer. He he's done like you know, Coldplay, Parachute, X and Y, Viva La Vida, John Mayer, Battle Studies, Continuum, James Bay, The Cooks, Empire of the Sun, Aretha Franklin, Luther Vandross, <laughs> Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, like you name it. Um, he was renting Studio B electric lady and that was his mix room so one day i was doing my shift at electric lady and from his uh from his engineer at the time and he's like hey man like can you swing by studio b when you finish your shift and i'm like "Uh, sure so i go down and we had a, a conversation and essentially they asked me if i was interested in joining brower's team and I was like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> because like Electric Lady was like a, a like an entry point for me, but I, I've i always wanted to be a mix engineer. I, I, I never really wanted to do recording for mm. a long term 